But now, as I say, I've been doing this for more than 30 years. I'm 55 years old. I went to the doctors not long ago, and he told me that I got high blood pressure and high cholesterol, and I had to give up all the things I like and start taking tablets. Well, I'm taking the tablets, and I cycle loads. And for those who've seen me a few times, you've probably noticed that there's a bit less of me than there used to be. And that isn't because I drink any less beer. It means that instead of getting the train to the pub, I cycle there. It's good. Beer and cycling is a good diet. And this poem is about that. It's dedicated to anybody who is getting on for, for my sort of age. It's called Too Much Pressure. It's an old punk rocker poem. This angry young man is still angry, but older. And now Father Time has just pissed on my shoulder. You've got to grow up, John. You're way past that stage. You've reached the condition they call middle age. It's time to be quiet. Say yes. Watch TV, high spot of the week, a nice dinner party, polite conversation until you doze off. The topics, house prices, taxation, and golf. That's golf by the way, in case you're unsure, not pale folk in graveyards obsessed by the cure. Now just look at you in your 70s gear with your punk rock and football and microbrew beer, political poems and loud angry songs. You still want to change things and right the world's wrongs? You stand up and shout and you get in a rage. It's really not right in a man of your age. On top of all that, and I don't mean to frighten, worst of all for your blood pressure, you support Bright. They're not very good, and you don't want to die, so sit on the couch and watch Chelsea on Sky. No! Sure, I'll take the tablets and drink a bit less. If you fancy a game, I might play you a chess. I hope that I'll make it till I'm 95. But one thing's for sure, death, you'll take me alive. Cheers. <laughs> I'm sitting bright and I'm playing at home this evening. My wife is dead. We're both season ticket holders. So later on I shall be checking in to find out how, the, how we're playing. We're a lot better than we used to be. Um, a lot better. We're challenging to go up into the top division in England this season now after many years of having to fight for existence. That is capitalism destroying football. I might do a song about that, that later on. But now I'm going to do a completely new poem. And these are the ones I have to read. Now, the ones I have to read, I'm confronted with a bit of a dilemma, because sometimes I have to put my glasses on. I fucking don't, I, mean, I don't like wearing glasses, but uh, sometimes it has to happen. But here I think we're okay. So here's the first of quite a lot of new poems for you. And this one has the strange title of Fugazi, Cliff Richard, and me. <laughs> Lance Armstrong, banned from his sport for taking performance enhancing substances. A chemistry experiment on wheels, the latest of many. Pilloried, infamous, cast out, while we invariably wonder how many of the others, dutifully joining in the chorus of condemnation, are whizzing around on a saddle, zooming around the track, or hoovering up the yards in the pool. It got me thinking though. In sport, the worst thing that you can do is take drugs. If you're caught, you become a non-person. Your achievements, however glorious, are immediately discounted and wiped from the record books and you are fated to live out your days in a mixture of ignominy and obscurity. Think what would happen if the same principle was applied to rock and roll. If every song, every album, every gig performed by people who had taken drugs was eradicated from the musical canon and cast into the pit of oblivion. It would make Stalin's purges look like open mic night at an anarchist squat. Carnage! All my heroes, gone! The Velvet Underground, Mark Bowden, Dexy's Midnight Runners, the Drunk Stabbing Clash. All your heroes gone too. The Grateful Dead, Hendrix, Acid House, Reggae. No more heroes anymore. I'll be safe though. I got through my formative poetic years on beer rather than the likes of LSD, which fortunately means that my work has always been devoid of hippie bollocks. And when I talk about cherry blossom, I mean boot polish. 
Furthermore, Dark Star 6 Hot Ale is definitely not performance enhancing in any sense of the word. Is it audience? Is it darling? No, my wife will confirm that too. But I am glad that the worlds of sport and music have different rules because I think I could scarcely bear to live in a world where the only sounds to be heard were those of Fugazi, Cliff Richard, and me. Thank you. <laughs> and here's another. This one is, again, pretty much brand new. I'm sure you are aware that there is a big debate going on among right-wing dickheads in England about whether England or Britain should be part of the... Well, they say, should Britain be part of Europe? This is my response. David Cameron says that if the Tories are next elected at the next election, he will have an in-out referendum. He will give the people of Britain the chance, or England or whatever, the chance to decide whether or not they want to be part of Europe. This is called an in-out referendum on Europe is a geographical non-starter, Cameron, you dickhead. <laughs> there are six continents. Asia, America, Antarctica, Australia, Africa and Europe. The UK isn't in any of the other five, is it, Cameron? Is it U UK alcohol dependent party golfers for prejudice? Is it Daily Express, Sun, Daily Mail reading amoeba heads? Did you do geography at school? England, Blighty, the old country, whatever, depending on your social background and chosen form of address, is in Europe. We, all of us, are indisputably, implacably European. We are. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. The only kind of relationship the UK has with Europe is the kind you have with that lager filled beer gut of yours, or your gin and tonic habit, or your gout, or the nasty disease you caught from your butler, or if you're a true member of the aristocracy, a member of your close family. We are as much part of Europe as they are a part of you. You might not like it, but we are. We are joined to fucking Europe. Okay, there is a bit of sea in the way. But underneath that sea, there isn't some kind of surreal gap. There is Europe. We are joined to it. That's right. If you had one single functioning brain cell, you would be aware of the fact that this country is as much part of Europe as France, Liechtenstein, or any of those other strange places where the inhabitants speak a language which you don't understand. We are European like every other country in Europe, one among many, not special. Got it? The only way we are special is that we are the only country in Europe apart from France where 90% of the population can't speak a fucking foreign language. <laughs> ah, you'll say, you're not talking about the physical geography of Europe, you're talking about the EU. I'm not actually very keen on the EU, since I am for a European Union of the people. I'm against a Europe dominated by slimy, pinstripe capitalist scum. But then, I'm against a world dominated by slimy capitalist scum, and sadly, it most certainly is right now. So, in the same way that the UK isn't a special case in Europe, Europe isn't a special case in the world. On that basis, I love the EU and adore the Euro. Why? Because they wind up xenophobic, moronic tabloid newspaper reading, Barathea blazer wearing, delusions of English grandeur suffering, PC as a term of abuse employing idiots, ban the pound, fill in the English Channel, superglue the UK to France, right in the middle of the garlic growing season, now! And no, I don't want a fucking referendum. Cheers. <laughs> this one last week too. This is the first uh, of two poems I'm going to do about where I live. Or where, where, where me and my family live is on the south coast of England near Brighton. We're not actually in Brighton, we live in Southwick which is in the middle of the harbour, the port of Shoreham, which is a port like Amsterdam. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first of all, this is a brand new poem called Missionaries. Even when I was a kid, it always seemed a bit of a rough pub. Red brick, four square, slightly shabby, on the seafront, just down from Southwick Station, surrounded by the flats which had been built on the land cleared when most of the Victorian seafront community where my granddad grew up was demolished in the 60s. Next to the old town hall, near the entrance to Shoreham Port and the customs building, 
the pilot. As far as I can remember, I'd only ever been in there once. They say first impressions are lasting ones. And my first impression was that if you wanted a pint of something that definitely wasn't real ale, or a fight, or some of the stuff Lance Armstrong liked, or you wanted to get served despite barely having pubic hair, or you'd been thrown out of all the other pubs in Southwick, or you were a sailor just arrived in port and desperate to get pissed, it was the place to be.